Good morning. Welcome to Friday again. Oh, heading towards the end of June now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, I am Rachel Patterson, but then hopefully you know that. <laughs> good morning, Maria. Uh, good morning, Jane. And as I was about to say, if you're there, please do pop a hello in the comments. Good morning, Jay. Being very, very super techie this morning. Hopefully, this is airing not only live to Facebook, but also to my YouTube channel. We'll see if it actually works. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Dawn. Good morning, Susie. Good morning, everyone, on this really, really rainy, miserable, dreary day in the south of England. Good morning, Xenia. Uh, yes, we missed you last week, Maria. I know Maria watches on Catch Up, though. <laughs> Good morning, Willow Moon. Welcome, everyone, to yet another Friday. Uh, where are we now? Yes, 25th of June. So, oh, this year has just disappeared, disappeared completely. Good morning, Christine. Uh, yes, <laughs> woof to Eric, who is downstairs under a blanket in his armchair. <laughs> because, you know, where else would you be on a miserable rainy morning? Um, it sounds like a good plan to me, actually, under a blanket somewhere. Though I'd like a good book as well. Not sure Eric's too hot on reading, but you never know. But good morning to everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's lovely to see you all here. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Uh, I hope everyone is well. We had a jolly yesterday, which was very, very nice to get outside. Um, I was going to say semi-normal, but I'm not even sure what normal is anymore. <laughs> anyway, myself and some of the gang went to Midhurst, which is a very, very nice little village found a fantastic cafe that did everything, catered for everybody, which was fab. And we went charity shopping. We got a good haul between us. <laughs> and then we found a fantastic walk, fields and a river and an old stone bridge and a, and a walled garden full of flowers. Absolutely brilliant. So it was very nice to get outside and actually do stuff. And thankfully it didn't rain on us either. So... Um, <laughs> Jane, it is a great day for knitting socks if you can knit, which is not one of my skills. <laughs> Xenia says Eric is an armchair magician. Armchair Daxon, he is, definitely. <laughs> definitely, bless him. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Rachel. Uh, Jane, yes, thank you. It was a lovely day out. It was really nice to get out. You know, still social distancing and copious amounts of hand sanitizer in every shop and their masks on obviously but it was um yeah it was good to it was good to charity shop let's be honest <laughs> i haven't been in one of those for about a year and a half so it was very good to um, do some charity shopping uh good morning eva yes pete and, pete and eric are downstairs this morning pete is working hard as always and Eric's working hard at sleeping. He's very good at it. <laughs> oh, and barking. Uh, Jane, did you find any real treasures? It was funny, actually. I went looking for clothes because, you know, why not? Um, I did get quite a few bits and pieces. It was funny. We were in this very, uh, let's bear in mind, Midhurst is quite a posh area. So we were in this charity shop looking at all these things and there were very expensive clothes and shoes in there that people had donated at brands that we couldn't afford in charity shops, let alone in the real shops. And Sue got caught on a scarf as she walked past, picked up the scarf to unhook herself and realised it was a beautiful purple scarf and it had gold goddess symbols all over it in the middle of a very posh charity shop. So obviously she took that home with her. I think that was probably a um, real treasure find of the day. <laughs> uh, good morning, Kay. Christine went and stuffed our tuck shelf as we visited the local Belgian chocolate factory shop. Yum. That sounds like a place that everyone ought to visit. Just call me chocolate chops. <laughs> uh, Xenia's video keeps freezing. Oh, is everybody, is the video feed ever right, all right for everyone else? I'm, try, I'm trialing something this morning. I'm airing live 
apparently, to Facebook and, oh, it is, I think that's my internet actually. Am I still with everyone? Let's get it up on my phone. Let me know in the comments if I'm still feeding properly. Does that sound weird? Feeding properly. Yeah, feeding properly. I am trialing. I'm, I'm going live to YouTube and Facebook. It might be confusing it. Or it might be just that our internet has been absolutely pants this week. Um, yeah. Internet, rain. Fine downstairs. Okay. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, it's just being a bit of an arse then, isn't it? Um, good old internet. I apologise. I have. It, we're all plugged in directly to the internet, so fingers crossed. It's just um, one of those hiccup things. I'm doing my Vogue pose. Vogue. <laughs> oh, that's going back a bit. Oh, I did like a bit of Madonna. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it's. It's going out properly to everyone. Let's hope it sorts itself out. Um, if I crash for everyone, give me a shout. Um, I feel a bit like that today. <laughs> so I thought today, I went around the garden and thought, what have we got um, that's in season? And there are lots of beautiful flowers in the garden at the moment. The roses have been amazing, but we've covered roses. So I picked on the humble geranium which is actually not a geranium at all, just to confuse us. It's actually a pelagonium. The little pots of pink, red, white um, geraniums that you buy in supermarkets and garden centres that they call geraniums are actually technically pelagoniums. I know, <laughs> it's just to confuse us. Oh, Willamone's watching me from YouTube. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's come up with a little YouTube symbol. Oh, look at me being all techie. <laughs> um, but the one, yes, the ones we buy labelled geraniums in the garden centres are pelagoniums. The real geraniums are more wild, and they're on that card there. That's the official geranium. Uh, which are brilliant plants as well. They flower for ages and ages and ages in the garden and they are hardy. These ones are really just used as bedding plants because they are not frost hardy. Although having said that, I do tend to put them in air garden in the greenhouse over winter or in a sheltered corner and they seem fine. Cut, cut them back in the spring and they all sprout again. So that's it. So whether you use the wild geranium, the pelagonium, the geranium from the supermarket, Whatever comes under the geranium umbrella. Uh, are those herb robber? No, Maria, that's a, that is a different plant. That's a different plant. Uh, Eva says, my husband refuses to have geraniums around since they are the last flower you see before you die. Apparently they are popular with Dutch elderly homes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's a bit sad. <laughs> I love them. They give loads of colour in the summer right the way through. They're brilliant. Christine was given one and now have loads of them. Yeah, they are, I must admit, they are one of my favourites for summer colour. They are loud. They shout. They come in, they do come in white, but they come in pale pinks through to the, the bright, sassy pinks. Um, they come in reds. They come in oranges. Um, and, yes, the, the geranium essential oil is one of my favourites. It smells amazing. Yes, one of my favourites. Um Jane had a scented drain in the garden, but it's not come back this year. No, they're not hardy, Jane. They're really not hardy. Um, it was essential ingredient in my peace dust. Gorgeous when mixed with mint and cardamom. Oh, that I could eat that. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> I think for me, the geranium scent, it has got that kind of Turkish delight scent to it, hasn't it? But they aren't hardy. If you can bring them indoors or pop them in a greenhouse over winter, you should be able to keep them. The scented geraniums are um, more about the leaves than the flowers, really. They have little tiny flowers in pinks and whites, but the leaves are really highly scented and you can get them in all different scents. You can get a rose scented one, but we've had all kinds of things. We had a Coca-Cola scented one. Uh, we've had a chocolate scented one and a mint scented one. They're amazing. Um, oh, good morning, Leslie. Jackie said we used to have lots of colour in our garden until our little dinosaur rot while a puppy ate them. <laughs> yeah. 
we had to put a fence around all of their flowers when we got Erica first because that's what he would do, that and eating the shingle. Um, but we've opened it up now and he seems to be all right. Uh, yes, Jane, do get another. The scented geraniums are lovely, uh, but you will have to keep it um, indoors or in the greenhouse over winter because they aren't hardy at all. But these are the, you'll see them in, um, you will see them in garden centres, obviously, but they are quite often in supermarkets uh, as well in different colours. So geranium, pelagonium, all kind of, oh, I, they're all under one big umbrella, but you can use them all for the same magical purpose. Um, hello, Maharet. Hello over there on YouTube. Uh, Eve had a pineapple one once. Yes, they're brilliant. They do them in all different sorts of scents. It's amazing. Um, Coca-Cola scented geranium. There was Zenia. We had one last year and it actually smelt of cola. It was bizarre. Uh, Christine, my girls get up in the morning and go foraging for my herbs. Yeah, dogs seem to like herbs, don't they? Eric favours our ornamental grass, which is fine, but he eats it and then it makes him sick. So we have to keep him away for that one from that one. Idiot dog. <laughs> but I realised actually that I've covered a few of the flowers and herbs and things. Good morning, Amy. But I hadn't sort of jumped into how you actually connect with the spirit of them. So I will cover that this morning as well, because it is one of my favourite areas to work with. Every plant, every flower, every herb, every tree, even every magical, and even and every, oh, can you tell it's been a long week? Even every food ingredient has an energy. It has that, and it's that energy that makes up the magical properties. <laughs> We're making Nikki hungry now, yes. <laughs> um, Jane tried growing catnip, but the local cats will have did. Actually, when we were in this um, walled garden that we found yesterday, the catnip was huge. It was everywhere. And the bees, the bees were all over it, bless them. But yes, so every plant, every flower, it all has an energy. And it's by tapping into that energy that you can discover the magical properties. Now, I use I dry everything from the garden whether it is flowers leaves petals seed heads everything gets dried and used for magical purpose I add them to my candle magic spells I make spell pouches or mojo bags I put them in witches bottles I fill poppets with them I make magic sachet powders with them I smudge my house with bundles of them I make incense from them um, they have so many uses so many uses um, good morning, Tony. <laughs> Jane, did the bees go buzz or meow? <laughs> they definitely buzzed, Jane. They were really loud. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I use all of the dried plant material from the garden and dried food ingredients as well for all sorts of things. Good morning, Kay. So all plants have spirits. Uh, and to connect with the magical property of each plant, it is my suggestion that you make a connection to the spirit within it. This is done slightly differently if the plant is still growing as opposed to connecting with the energy of the dried herb. So we'll work with the actual plant as it's growing to start off with. Uh, Willow Moon says, my catnip's hanging in a basket now. My cat's turned into dealers and the garden was filled with wonky cats. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine them standing on the corner doing their deals with their catnip. <laughs> <laughs> Exchanging money for catnip. You could, I wouldn't put it past cats, actually, to do that, because, you know, they're wily old things, aren't they? <laughs> but, yes, all plants have the spirit. So if you're working with the actual plant as it's growing, and I would suggest you make a connection with it anyway, if but before you're going to pick something, it helps to make a connection with it just so that you can ask permission as well. Uh, you have to talk to it to connect to it. Whether you talk to it through your head without words or whether you talk with words is entirely up to you. Depends how mad you want the neighbours to think you are. But you, I think it's really beneficial to make that connection. And there are lots and lots of lists of magical correspondences on the Internet, in books. There's loads in mine. But I think if you make that connection to the spirit of the plant, you'll find your own magical properties. Every single plant is different. Even if you have 
two geraniums, they're both going to have a slightly different energy because every plant has its own character and its own personality. Uh, so I think by connecting with it, you can decide what it can help you with and what it specialises with for you, because I think it's very personal. What works for someone may not work for the next person, and someone might use basil for prosperity, but the other person would use it for protection. It's it, You've got to make that connection to work out what's right for you and what it can help you with. Um, Jane says, my girls go to a catnip cocktail bar called the Blue Persian in their secret life. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all of our pets have secret lives, definitely. Um, I think as well, if you are working with spells and you're after a particular ingredient that you don't have, it really helps to know what plants you've got in your garden or in your stores and know how they're going to work for you so that you know that you've got a substitute. Or alternatively, just run your hand over your jars of herbs or even go out into the garden and put your intent out there and see what herb or plant jumps out at you. Um, just to so, you know, it will tell you that it can help you with that magical purpose. Um, Willow Moon, I need some healing after surgery. Low energy, internal stitches, ouch to heal. Is there a specific plant? flower energy which would help to connect with for me a healing one would be time time's really good for healing i'm just gonna get i've got a list in here obviously um but carnation is also one of my go-to for healing um they're both very good but go out into your garden or go into your kitchen cupboard and see which one is going to work for you ask you know put it out there that you need some healing and see what particularly jumps out at you. Uh, yeah, there's a whole list here of healing stuff. Uh, I'll pick out the more traditional ones, bay leaves. Um, do, 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 do. Caraway seeds would be really good. Carnation, cinnamon, uh, coriander, cowslips. They're not in season at the minute, so that's not much help. Echinacea, they're due to flower in the next few weeks. Elder, eucalyptus, fennel. Garlic is really good. Hazel, uh, hyssop, my uh, anise hyssop has just started flowering in the garden. Ivy, juniper, lemon balm, brilliant for healing. There was The lemon balm is all over the place at the moment. Marjoram, mint, uh, mugwort, that's out at the minute too. Uh, sting nettles, really good for healing. Uh, oak, pine, Roses, if you've got roses, they're really good for healing, as is rosemary, and that's in its prime at the moment too. Uh, thistles, thyme, uh, and willow. I mean, that's just a few of them. But I would see what you've got in your local area, in your garden, in your kitchen cupboard, willow moon. Put that intent out there that you want to work with a plant spirit for healing and see what comes to you. Um, they are all different. Uh, Kay saying, yes, essential oil batches are slightly different each time, but because each plant has a different energy. Uh, Karen has three big hawthorns at the back of the house I've had for years, and they are really very different characters. Yep. She's got 24 baby ones as well. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, you've got to um, make that connection because each one is different. Um, Hi, sweets. I'm currently pulled to making wands. I've never used them, although for some reason seems to be a calling. I have a hazel wand and I used and watched to keep for myself. Um, how may I go about making that connection? I'm just about to tell you. <laughs> um, so if you want to make that connection with them, if you've got the actual growing plant, you need to spend some time. It is a relationship. You've got to build a relationship, whether you're working with a plant spirit, an animal spirit or deity or the divine or any of those connections. They are all relationships and any relationship takes a little bit of work and a little bit of time to make a connection. So if you think about it in that kind of form, then you're on the right track. If the plant is in your garden, it's a lot easier. <laughs> if it's in your local park or your forest, um, you might get some strange looks, but just go and sit with it. Basically, that's where you start. You go and sit with it. Um, spend some time. And you, you're going to have to open up your 
spidey senses, your third eye, your intuition, whatever you call that energy within yourself, you're going to have to open that up and make a connection with the plant. Now, with their students, we get them to reach out to the plant to touch the energy field. So if you can put your hands around the plant and slowly bring them in, you should be able to feel a bit of a resistance. Sometimes it's a couple of inches out with a tree or a bigger plant, it might be a few inches out, even a couple of feet. You can do it with people too, you can do it with animals. It's the same thing. It's your aura, it's your energy field, everything has it. Once you make that connection with the energy field, then you can make the connection with the plant. If you can't touch it, if you can't reach it, if it is out the way, or you can actually do this in a, in a journey, in a very deep meditation when you haven't got the plant, you can ask, open up your spidey senses and ask on the astral plane, basically, to connect with the plant spirit. Uh, it's about making that, opening yourself up, but making that connection to the energy of the plant. Whether you can do it with touch, whether you just do it with your mind is entirely up to you and how you work. But it is making that connection. And hopefully you will get images, you might get words, you might get a feeling or an emotion. Uh, sometimes if it's a pot plant, you'll get that, I need water. <laughs> uh, so the plant may actually tell you what it needs or the fact that it doesn't like being in that part of the garden or it doesn't like being in that part of the house. Or if you're in a city, it might be a plant telling you that it is struggling with the pollution or, you know, you might get messages from the plant about its well-being as well. So do pay attention to those as well because you may be able to help on that front. But it is about spending time. And I would start by looking at the plant. We've got all of these senses and we can use all of these senses to make that connection. So I would start by looking at the plant. Don't just look at it and think, well, that's pretty. Really, really look at it. Use your witchy senses. Look at the petals. Look at the flowers. Look at the leaves. Look at the stem. If you can touch the plant, then feel it as well. Feel how soft the petals are or how spiky the leaves are or how hard the stem is. But really, really look. I mean, if you look at this geranium that I've got here, each flower has, you can count the petals and then look at the petals because each petal has veins in it. And each petal has a lighter colour in the middle and it spans out to the darker. Look at the stamens in the centre and then turn it round and look at the back of the flower look at the little flower buds, look at the colour and makeup of the stem, look at the leaves, feel the leaves. If it's got a scent, smell the flowers. Some of the leaves have scents too. So if you're smelling, don't just smell the flowers, smell the leaf as well. Really, really get to know that plant um, visually first and then by touch and then by smell and then with your uh, other world senses reach out and make that connection with it jane says lost my fennel too think it just had its day yeah i we think about plants as being perennial plants as being there forever but most of them have a, a certain la lifespan maria says doesn't lavender heal lavender is very calming and peaceful if yes you could absolutely use it for healing maria good morning caroline um Okay, think of any plant or essential oil that has loads of information about them, but a single plant can offer its own special connection. Yes, because in the whole scheme of things, the plant as it's growing will have a spirit. Once it's been bits of it have been picked, it still carries an energy, it still carries a magical energy, but the actual spirit of the, is within the plant itself. There are garden overlords as well if you like there's lots of plant spirits within the garden each plant has its own spirit but you'll also find there is what they call a diva which is kind of the construction manager for the entire garden or the grove or the area as well so there are lots of spirits that you can reach out and connect with but it's the individual plant spirits you want to make that connection with if you're going to work magic with them uh, Jane says, lavender and tea tree essential oils are the only ones you can put directly on your skin in tiny amounts. Uh, I have to be honest, Jane, I would even um, be very careful with that. Test a very small area first. And if you're pregnant or young children or old people, don't do it. But definitely with essential oils, you have to be really careful. Do test them first. 
Um, but yeah, I wouldn't put them anything directly on your skin without mixing it with a base oil. Um, Sweet says, very sensitive, although not to plants really, still listening. Yeah, you know, make that connection. Take some time to get to know them. If you've not worked with plant spirits before, just spend some time and sit with the plant or the tree and get to know it. Look at it, touch it, smell it. <laughs> really get to know the, as if it was a person, as if you were getting to know a new friend. Um, Nikki says, I always have a wee chat with my plants. Plants like to be spoken to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Kay says, my ex used to say, well, you have a 50-50 chance to grow. It's up to you. Yeah, I have had words with plants before <laughs> if they're not behaving themselves. <laughs> um, Maria said, I used a tiny drop of lavender on cotton wool buds to dab on my children's chicken box instead of cal 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 calamine. Cool. Uh, Christine says, if you pick a leaf and take it into a really, really dark room, then break the leaf in half, you guarantee you will see the spirit of the plant. Laurel is one of the strongest that I've seen. Beautiful light shines out in the darkness. Excellent way to work with it, Christine. Excellent way to work with it. Um, they do. Hi, Jackie. We worked with plant divas on a herb farm years ago, and the medicines we made were astonishing. Plant spirit communication is awesome. Some plants are more chattier than others. They are. Some won't want to know you. You know, you are dealing with personalities. So some plants might say, I'm really grumpy and tired, leave me alone. <laughs> I found with some trees as well, they just don't want to, just don't, no more hugging. Look, that's enough, guys. <laughs> so it is worth asking permission first and seeing whether you get a positive feel um, from the plant rather than just wading straight in there and picking its leaves and squashing it be respectful and be gentle with it as well um but it is about making that connection and once you've made the connection with the plant spirit you can talk to about all sorts of things it may well share insight and guidance with you you can do it without the plant i mentioned before i did another video a while back about uh, meditations and head riding as well if you work with shamanic practices you can do it in trance and shamanic journeys as well I do it with hedge riding where I go with the intent of meeting a specific plant spirit guide. They can then help you once you're on the other plane. They can help you with generally healing, but lots of other things as well. Um, but it is about making that connection and, and building that relationship. Um, Sweet says, what if the branches were cut and sent? How to connect then? Um once that's actually, I do find everything still has an energy, but I do find once it's uh, cut, picked, plucked, taken away from the growing plant, the energy may well be lower. So it might take a little bit more um, energy on your part to make that connection, but it's still there. Do exactly the same thing. Hold it, look at it, smell it, feel it. Uh, make that connection just as if it were a growing plant. And we do it with dried herbs. I mean, I've got stacks of dried herbs here and I do the same thing. I make the connection with the dried herbal plant first before I work with it in my magical workings. So you can still do it, just might the energy might be a little bit lower if it's no longer growing. Jane says there was a TV program with Dame Judy Dench talking about trees. Yes, and they could trees communicate with each other. Absolutely. They do. They're all connected. They're all connected. Uh, Kay says, lavender is one of the only oils to use neat. Uh, but like food, people are allergic to natural things too. Yeah, always do a patch test first. Uh, yeah, because you could always be allergic to it. It's, it's, I think it's worth being safe rather than sorry with essential oils. Uh, sweets, just, just almost same as a crystal, sweets. As you would make that connection with a crystal, exactly the same with any piece of wood branch twig leaf flower exactly the same as you would approach a crystal and make a connection with the crystal you do the same jackie says our bonsai tree was not happy and almost at the point where we were throwing it away then i moved it to a different spot in the kitchen and boom literally came back to life bigger leaves looks fab now and so healthy yeah i mean plants again they they're particular about where they want to be what soil they want to be in, how much they want to be watered, what light, what shade, what, you know, their conditions. Yeah, I know some of them are really picky. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, psychic people call this psychometry. Mm, different thing, Kay, different thing. Uh, psychometry is about taking an object and reading its history and its past. Um, this is about connecting with plant spirits. So I would say that is quite a different thing. This is about connecting with plant spirits. And I think it's really important to build that relationship first. Um, <laughs> Christine, my daughter had a spiky plant once and she didn't know the name. So she called it bitch plant. <laughs> oh, it was just being protective. <laughs> We have a great big palm in our living room that's called Bernard, but you know, <laughs> but I like to name some of the house plants, <laughs> not the garden plants because too many of them, although some of their trees are named. We have Joe, the rowan tree, <laughs> for example, but it is about making that connection. It is about uh, building that relationship. Take some time. If it's lovely outside, just go and sit outside and spend some time with the plant. Um, but use all of your senses with it. You've got those senses. You And if you're witchy, you've got extra senses. So use them all. Uh, Xenia says, we have a German tree expert, Peter. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his surname. Uh, he wrote books on that, plants communicating through chemicals and through the underground network. Yes, they do. Their plants have a great connection to each other under the ground. Uh, Willow Moon, maybe it's just me, but when I pick herbs, I feel the energy. But as they wilt, it's as though the energy goes away. But when dried, the scent comes back. Yes, <laughs> oh, I'm with you. Absolutely, Willow Moon. Um, uh, exactly the same. Uh, as they're growing on the plant, their energy is strong. The energy is strong in this one. <laughs> as you pick it, you can feel it. It is a little bit like the life draining away, isn't it? I know exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. But something magical happens when you dry them. And it seems to um, boost the energy back again. Um, it is very, yes, it's magic. It is magic. It is transformation. Yes, I think it is the transformation of it. It's gone from... Um, being living a bit of a shock to the system but then as it dries I think it does it transforms into a magical ingredient and that energy comes back to it absolutely William Moon. I agree with you 100% uh, Jane we have to find some common ground to chat with plants just like we do people yeah absolutely absolutely it is a relationship um, but then you can once you've made that relationship you can find out what the plant can help you with uh, as I say, there are lists everywhere, but it's about making that connection with that individual plant so that you can find out what it's able to help you with. Uh, and then they've all got, you know, they've all got different things. They can all help with different things like prosperity, love, protection, uh, hex breaking, all sorts of things. They'll also have a gender generally. Uh, and this is a general thing that dates back a long time that, that plants, different types of plants like crystals, have a gender. You may notice that when you connect with the plant spirit. You might not. They might be happy to be neither or both, you know, plant world up to them. Uh, but that may help with your magical working as to whether they have got more feminine or masculine energy within them. Um, there's Each plant will also be often ruled by a planet or a certain element as well. So you can bring that into your magical working as well. Um, Karen, I used to make a lot of tree essences. I love doing it. May start again now. Go for it, Karen. Xenia says that's interesting. I even read in recipes that if you use dried herbs instead of fresh ones, you need less. Yes, because the dried ones are stronger. They they are the the flavour and the scent of a dried herb intensifies once it's dried. So it makes sense that the magical energy will intensify as well. Uh, Jane, I put my ear to a tree trunk during a strong wind and I could hear the tree reacting to the wind by sloshing its sap up and down like it was trying to hold its ground. Yeah, I do wonder about that. Sometimes when it's really windy and all the branches sway, it must be horrendous for them. Um, definitely. Um, Jackie says, our plants are moaning about the soil in our garden. So I communed with the soil, which is a living, breathing thing as well. Absolutely. And we're gradually... Um, building that relationship to balance out the nutrients. Yeah, abs yes, again, soil is a living thing. And all of the insects and um, life that's in the soil that does all the work, things that we can't even see, 
along with the worms and everything else. Um, it's all a relationship with the insects and the animals in the soil, as well as with the soil and the plants. It's all, a, it's, everything's connected. <laughs> we know it's all connected. So yes, definitely um, work with the energy of your soil in your garden too. And again, it may tell you that it needs something. It is really clay and it keeps saying, will you please dig some more stuff in to make me not so heavy, <laughs> which we do. Uh, good morning, Joe. Uh, yeah, it's again, it's a relationship. So it is about making that connection. Um, it is something straightforward to do, but it may take a little bit of practice to be able to open yourself up and make that connection. Uh, work with it, work with it. But the plant spirits can become our allies, just as uh, we might work with an animal spirit or a deity guide or even a spirit guide. The plant spirit can become your ally as well. Um, it is just about making that connection and working with them as well. Um, they can also be connected with us, say, in meditation, or um, although you need to go quite deep. So it needs to be a shamanic journey or a hedge riding or a trance, really, to get to that real plant spirit guide that can help you and deal with you. Um, but they can become your allies. So just as you would have, like, I've got a wild boar, um, you could form the same relationship with a particular plant that you might go to quite a lot and build that energy with it. Um, but you can also dream about them. You can put the intent out there as you before you go to sleep to ask that you meet your your specific plant spirit guide. Uh, hopefully in your dream, you might see a plant, a tree, a flower. You might smell a scent of a herb or even hear the name in your dream. Um, this could probably be backed up. You might then see it on the television or when you're out and about or read about it in a book in the coming days. So as with animal spirit guides, the same is with plant spirit guides, keep an eye out and see what you might what might appear in your dreams or what you might see when you're out and about and keep seeing, make a note of it. Um, and then if you do think, oh, I've seen that one quite a lot, sit down specifically with the intent to meditate with it and see whether it is going to be your plant spirit guide. Uh, different ways of working with it. Connect with the plant spirit guide of individual plants because you need to work with them and then you can also find a particular plant spirit guide that will help you with lots of things. So different ways of looking at it, different ways of working. Um, <laughs> Christine put five bags of horse poo into her garden. The flowers loved it. Can't say the same for the neighbours. <laughs> no, a little bit whiffy, but very, very good. Roses in particular like horse poop. Um, Nikki says, I have five trees in my garden, two of which are huge. I swear my neighbour thinks I'm a total fruitcake when I say, morning trees, how are you today? Yeah, I'm pretty sure our neighbours know that we're completely bonkers. <laughs> um, Xenia says, uh, pumping the sap, it can even be measured, the heartbeat of plants. Yes, um, it makes sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. Jane says, soil science is mind-bogglingly interesting feel I have a duty to make compost, to return all the organic waste to the soil. Wasting food, food waste, oh dear, food waste is as simple as wasting food. Yeah, absolutely. I think it is about being mindful of the planet as a whole, isn't it? If you are interested in all of the biodynamic stuff of soil, then uh, fellow author Ellen Cynthia talks about that. Um, she's got lots of information about that. Um, Caroline said, yesterday evening, I kept smelling roses really strongly, even though I was nowhere near any actual roses. Be worth investigating that, Caroline. That might have a message for you. That's the other thing. If you see or smell or keep seeing a particular plant or a particular herb, it might be that the plant spirit is reaching out to you with a message. It might have message or guidance for you. So spend some time uh, and meditate to see whether it has an actual message for you. But it is a really, really useful connection to make and relationship to build in various ways before any plant that you want to work with or as a um, general plant spirit guide um, to provide guidance, really. Um, Willow Moon, if flowers love horse poo, does that mean fairies do? <laughs> I don't know, Willow. Maybe they'd prefer that to honey. I think they probably prefer honey, to be honest with her moon. But you never know. 
you never know <laughs> again it's different spirits isn't it it's different uh plant spirits are really part of the huge fairy world as the divas are that control the whole of the garden so there will be fairies or spirit plant spirits for each individual plant so there will be plant spirits um all across the garden in different levels and different plants so hmm, i guess it depends interesting question Jane, I was knocked back by a smell of roses when I asked for help to restore someone's dignity once. It was an amazing experience. If you put the question out there, if you ask for them, um, it will, they'll help you. They'll absolutely help you. Eva, The Druid Garden by Luke Eastwood is a great book on both the spiritual and practical side of gardening. Yes, that's a very interesting book. Lots and lots of useful information in there. Um, but let's have a look at geranium because we've got a few minutes left. I thought we'd look at geranium today because that's what's in the garden at the moment. Christine says, I love the weed, rose, bay, willow herb and all through my childhood I kept seeing it. Now I only see it rarely. Interesting to read what you'd say about rose, bay, willow herb. It's bay, that sounds like three, <laughs> three, three all together. Roses, bays and willows. Um, I'm not actually overly familiar with that one, Christine. I don't, it's not in the book. I know it's not in the book. Um, I think you would have to do your own journey on that one, Christine. That would be interesting. Um, if you saw it all through your childhood too, it would be interesting to meditate with that one to see what messages it has for you. Um, definitely. But I've got geranium today, geranium or pelagonium, wild geranium. So geranium is interesting. It is a witchy one because Traditionally, a witch would grow red geraniums in the garden to ward off negative energies, and it would warn when visitors coming. Um, a lot of folklore says that. I'm not sure how the flowers would warn when visitors coming. I've got a vision in my head of all the flowers, like in Alice in Wonderland, where they all turn <laughs> uh, and sort of shout, "Witch is on the way! The visitors are on the way! Witch, the visitors are on the way!" I don't think it does that. I've got them in my garden, and they don't do that. <laughs> Uh, Jane says, rose bay willow herb used to grow prolifically on bomb sites, but most of them have been tidied up and developed now. I think it's some, I think I know it under a different name. Um, but yes, definitely worth uh, investigating um, in meditation, Christine, as it's quite personal to you. Um, but yes, geraniums are supposedly ward off negative energy. So good to have around your house borders, boundaries. Um, very good for protection against that negative energy but also about sending warnings apparently keeping geraniums in pots indoors makes your guests feel welcome um, this one you might know actually as crane's bill the wild one the wild geranium you might know as crane's bill that's one of its folk names color magic gets brought into it as well Pink geraniums are good for love spells. White ones are good for fertility. Adding white geranium petals to incense blends for fertility works particularly well. Uh, Christine says, my flowers droop their heads when their neighbours go out, go, go, oh, bye. <laughs> yeah, they're fairly perceptive. It's because they've got this, this spirit energy within them, they are fairly perceptive. Um, you can use geranium petals in spells to help you feel more confident about socialising or to bring more social events your way. And I actually thought this was quite uh, interesting, um, particularly now where things are starting to open up. People are starting to venture out more. We are starting to do the whole socialising thing again. Um, and I think the petals, the geranium petals work really well for that. They can help boost their confidence because getting out there now is a little bit scary, having not done it for such a long time, and it gets a bit peopley, um, and everyone's supposed to be social distancing still and wearing masks and stuff. And um, yeah, I think it's a bit, geranium can help build your confidence back up there. Jane says, we used to go to a pub with massive geraniums in its lean-to seating area. We felt very welcome. Uh, you'll find a lot of pubs and, and restaurants and things do have geraniums outside uh, perhaps I think more often because they bring lots of color and they don't mind if you forget to water them <laughs> um, 
So I think that's more the reason, but they are very welcoming. Welcoming. Um, okay, which book? Um, it's this one, okay. All the information's in this one. Kitchen Witch's World of Magical Plants and Herbs. All of the info's in there. Um, Jackie says, we just planted a selection in two pots, either side of the picket fence that separates the middle garden to the back garden. Loving learning about them today. Um, yeah. Oh, there. Thank you, Heather. Heather's done a blog on the Kitchen Witch blog about Rose Bay Willow Herb. I bet I know what it is, but I just don't recognise the name. I probably know it's something else. So Heather's put the link there. Thank you, Heather. So the link there for you, Christine, about the Rose Bay Willow Rose Bay Willow Herb. <laughs> Um, Jane says pub geraniums are massive because they get leftover beer. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, so I think geranium is perfect at the moment um, because it helps with being social. It builds that confidence and helps you get out there and be more social and socialised. Um, so you can use any colour spell, uh, petal, geranium petals for that one. Um, to bring out confidence. Scented geraniums obviously combine the scent as well. So you've got the power of geranium, and then if it's a lemon-scented one, you've also got the power of lemon with it. If it's peppermint, you've got the added bonus of peppermint energy as well. They can all be used in spell work combined with their scents. Uh, geranium oil as well is particularly good to cleanse your aura to keep that negative energy um, out there. Uh, Maria says, her brubber I pull up and throw into an unused pot and it still flowers. Yeah, it will do. <laughs> it's one of those wildflowers, her brubber, isn't it? That it'll grow anywhere and everywhere. So, yeah, it will just keep going. <laughs> so generally, um, Jane says, her brubber could survive a cataclysmic event. Yes, I think you're probably right there. <laughs> so generally, geranium covers protection, fertility, love, mm -hmm socializing and cleansing of your aura uh it is ruled by the planet venus so it's got an awful lot of love power in it it's ruled by the sign of pisces and the element of water and the gender is generally feminine so it's got a huge boost of that watery emotion feminine energy behind it as well so it's i think it's really good for working with any sort of goddess work as well because it's got that kind of energy behind it uh, Eve says, another plant question. I'm moving in a couple of weeks. I want the first thing that we move in to be a plant of some kind to set the stage for our new lives there. Not sure what kind of plant, no ideas. I think with gardening outside, you have to work with the earth. I think moving to any garden, I would wait for a while and see what comes up or have them investigate and see what's actually already in the garden. But you'll need to check what soil you've got. You'll need to check which uh, direction it faces because that's going to have a, a play on what type of plant survives there as well. Um, whether it is sandy soil or clay or neutral, um, where the sun rises, where it sets across the garden. It's all there's a lot of factors that come into play when you're working with your outside garden. I think for this year, if you move in a couple of weeks, I would go for some bedding plants that are just going to brighten it up for now, basically. But go with what you're drawn to, Eva. Um, planning out a garden takes a while. And I think if you've moved to a new one, you need to get to know that garden first. You need to get to know all its idiosyncrasies and the lie of the land, so to speak. Uh, Kay says, can geraniums help with discord in families? Just curious on that point. Um, it wouldn't be my first go-to, I must admit, um, but it would make uh, perhaps a more comfortable area indoors because it is a very welcoming plant and it does bring love with it. Um, I think possibly I would lean towards roses for that one, K. but you have to trust your intuition and what you think would work. Um, Nettie's just bought the book. Oh, thank you, Nettie. Thank you, thank you superstar uh maria says i love mixing geranium and orange essential oil in my burner lovely combination maria. absolutely lovely combination um jane says yeah geranium ruled by venus so definitely good for matters of the heart yeah it's all about it. uh, it's got that real love energy to it definitely um so i've got the oracle card here as well so i'll have a quick go run through the meaning of that one 
there is a little poem written by myself, which is rubbish, but I'll read it anyway. <laughs> Don't be a total party wallflower. Find yourself and step into your power. Meet up with your friends. Get out and about. The good times await. No need to doubt. Hide behind your front door no more. Be a social butterfly, not a crashing bore. <laughs> I told you it was terrible. <laughs> This is the geranium message for this card, though, if you were to pull it. And I think it, it does work, really, with the energy of geranium. It can herald unexpected visit from friends or family. It can also mean that you need to get out and about, meet new people and socialise. You might meet some seriously interesting people or discover a long lost friend or even just get to know your neighbours better. Geranium can also symbolise being made to feel welcome in a situation or perhaps you need to make someone else in your circle feel more comfortable. Anyone heading into a new or unfamiliar area to meet different people will automatically put up barriers and shields. It's a natural form of self-preservation to bring in your protection against the unknown. It is a wise precaution, but in doing so, you may also shut yourself off or seem rude and unfriendly. So there's two kind of sides to this meaning, either that that's what you're doing in a situation or that there's someone in your circle that's doing that because they feel they need protection because they don't know people or they're unsure of people. Um, so that's quite an interesting card to work with. Um, they all have similar properties, as I say, the, the crane's bill, the world pelagonium, uh, the pelagonium, the world geranium. All of them have similar properties. Doesn't matter which one you go with. Um, it is said that the Islamic prophet Muhammad needed to dry his shirt out. So he draped it over the nearest plant, which was a mallow. He was so pleased with how well the plant held his shirt and allowed it to dry that he gifted the plant with beautiful blossoms. And ta-da, the geranium was born. There you go. <laughs> That's his creation story, <laughs> or one of them. Uh, Jane says, that sounds like a mantra for freedom from lockdown. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I wrote these cards a couple of years ago now. Well, no, more than a couple of years ago now, uh, probably three or four years ago. Um, but it is quite, and the fact that geraniums are flowering in garden at the moment, it's quite interesting, isn't it, that that one sort of came up. Maria pulled it with the solstice spread. Yes, I think it is a big important card for at the moment with the with the lockdown because we're all sort of coming out of it and beginning to come out of it uh christine i used to have all your books by the bed i had to bring them all downstairs into bookshelves <laughs> so not read this book for a while i must get out and read it again this one is the first part of this one a small part of this one is about connecting with the plant spirit guides the rest of it is all references it's each it's got references for each plants apart from the one you said christine um it's got most of the plants in it um with all of their magical properties and off, and a lot bits and pieces about folklore and magic and things uh, along with it um uh, you, well, you can see I use it. I got post-it notes in it, <laughs> but I think it's really important to. I think it's important to connect with uh, the individual spirit, spirit, plant spirits. But I think it is uh, also very important. It was mentioned before about the soil. I think it's important if you have a garden of any size, even if it is a courtyard garden with with paving and doesn't have actual soil. Um, there'll be soil underneath the paving, obviously. I think it's important to connect with the energy of the garden as a whole, as well as the individual plants. Um, it, by connecting with those plants, you're connecting with Mother Nature as well. And I think it's important because it does give you that connection to the all. And by connecting with all the plants, if you do it on a regular basis, you're also keeping in touch with the turning of the seasons, with the movement of mother nature as she goes through her seasons and if you go and do it on a regular basis you're also watching the plants the individual plants as well and they'll tell you what the the season is as well and they'll also give you quite an uh, an insight into the cycle of life uh, plants they all do it in various different ways depending on whether they are just annual bedding plants or um perennials or trees they all go through different stages and by connecting with them on a regular basis you are connecting with the energy of the source really but keeping in tune with the seasons and the energy as it moves um 
K is just introduced geraniums to my garden. They are absolutely brilliant for bringing colour uh, to the garden and they last all summer. They flower for ages and ages and they really don't mind if, they, if you forget to water them either. <laughs> They're Mediterranean plants, so they don't mind being a little bit dry too. Christine says, it's a brilliant book. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, Kay says, it's, it's a good resource. Thank you. you bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is about a personal thing, and it is, um, as Christine says, there are some plants that you perhaps remember from your childhood. Uh, to the one of the funny ones I remember is the cleavers, is the sticky things. On the walk to and from school, we used to throw them at each other and they'd stick to your jumper. <laughs> That's one of the main plants I remember from my childhood which is random because my dad is a fantastic gardener and always has been. And I used to spend hours in the garden with him as a kid. But the thing I remember is the cleavers that stick to you when you throw them at each other, <laughs> um, which is possibly a message for me in there. I should, I should delve into that one further. But you will find that you are drawn, same as crystals, you'll find that you're drawn to particular plants more than others. Uh, my husband's favourite is dahlias. I think we have about 17 in the garden at the moment. But then we have about 20 roses too, because we both love roses. Uh, Astrantias are some of my favourites. And they're all about the other world and mysteries. Uh, so I think it, you will find that you have connections to particular plants as well. And there will be a, probably a reason behind that as well. You just need to look into the meanings of them. Jane says, I bung my potted geraniums in a plastic pop-up for the winter and they're quite happy. I do. I chuck them in the greenhouse over winter, cut them back in the spring, cut them right back in the spring. And most of them come back up again. If, and if I forget and I've left them out over winter before now, um, where our garden's quite sheltered, they've always been fine as well. But um, the scented geraniums, you can't leave them out. They do. Um, they don't last. Bless them. Willow Moon, this book will be in my bookshelf as soon as payday comes out. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jackie, we used to make the snapdragons talk. Yes, antirhinums. They had little, you could do that with the flowers, can you? <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Christine says, cleavers, horrible in long hair. Oh, yes. <laughs> Getting them out of long hair. Definitely. Uh, Joe, yeah, you had to do it as a child. Definitely. Um, Jackie, maybe a topic for another time, as you mentioned the seasons. Can I just say, Bewitched Botanicals, if you hop on over to their website, they are starting to do an apothecary range of herbals and tisanes and teas and things. Apart from the fact that their soap is the best on the planet <laughs> uh, and their house is full of it, um, do hop on over to Bewitched Botanicals because they've got all sorts of different herbals and tisanes coming and, and just on the website. Go and have a look. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, maybe another topic um, for the seasons. They are weird at the moment. I reckon their garden is about three weeks behind where it was last year. It is confusing for the plants. My cherries are about a month behind and sulking again. Yep, mine is too. Uh, this time last year they were red. They're, they're barely green at the moment. So cold and dark where we are at the moment and so not where we should be. Yeah, it is. It is three or four weeks behind. Um, I am writing another book. Of course I am. I've got five book contracts at the moment that I'm writing. Oh, I make my head explode. But I'm writing one for Llewellyn at the moment about seasons and working with the Sabbaths, but working with the months, but about tailoring it all to your own area. Everyone works and lives in different areas and your seasons and your weathers and energies are all going to be different wherever you are. Uh, I think it is about working with your particular area um mother nature doesn't follow dates on a calendar um but we are definitely i reckon yeah definitely three weeks mm -hmm. behind at least um where we were last year uh kay says mine are in the flower beds i need to put straw around them to prep them over winter it depends where you are in the country kay or what country you're in uh in england they won't necessarily survive outside in the winter um, but it will depend on where you are in the world and what your zone is, what your temperate zone is. There's a link for Bridge Botanicals there. Come up. Thank you. Uh, Ellen, uh, Caroline, we used to play Grandfather Pop-Out Bed. Yes, with the bindweed flowers. 
um, I, we used to see grandmother, grandmother, grandmother pop out of bed. <laughs> and then you could pinch it, couldn't you? And the flower popped out, which was not really very good, really, because we used to pick the flowers, but they were weeds. Bindweed is good for binding, definitely good for binding things. Uh, yeah, I've forgotten that. Thank you for that, Carolyn. Um, thank you, Nikki. Uh, Christine says, like the Chinese saying, plant a tree in your head and maybe a little bird will come and sing. It is. Let's, you know, make these connections. Go and build relationships with your plants. They will, you will get so much from it. Not only will you be able to help them if they need moving or a particular thing or water or more plant feed or whatever, but they will be able to help you with your magic. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Jackie, pop out of bed. I know I'd forgotten about that too. I'm going to be singing that all day now. <laughs> That's my earworm for the day. <laughs> um, make those connections. It really, really will be worth it. It might take a little bit of practice to make that initial connection and to build a relationship, but do give it a try. Um, it is really, really worthwhile. Um, Jane says, bindweed is trying to choke the gooseberries. Not gooseberries. That's, they're my favourite, Jane. That's my favourite fruit. I think it grew from a reverted morning glory that went to seed. Doesn't look like an so you have mutant bindweeds, Jane. <laughs> they aren't very good in the garden. They really aren't very good in the garden, but um, they are very good. Um, dry them for um, binding spells. Definitely. Um, Caroline's apology. Yeah, we're all going to be singing that today now, Caroline. Uh, Xenia, I love that about the seasons. It's what I was reading about seasonal festivities in early Wicca too. It was said that the festivities are not a specific date. It depends where you live. Uh, if you think if you think about the wheel of the year, which is a Wiccan um, design, it was originally started in the 40s, 50s when um, Wicca was in its infancy. Some of the names were then added in the 1970s, and the wheel of the year that we see and know now is a 1970s design. Not that being modern makes it any less magical, or you know whatever the word is, it's gone. <laughs> Just because it's not old doesn't make it any less valid. So the Wheel of the Year was also designed uh, in the UK. So it doesn't necessarily translate to America or Europe, definitely doesn't translate to Australia. So I think as well with the seasons are now slightly different to as they were then. Let's remember as well that a lot of the old folklore and stories, the calendars were different too. The two, you know, the calendar, good old Julius Caesar changed the calendar. So dates were all over the place as well from way back. And although the Wheel of the Year is uh, based on some ancient Celtic festivals, it's not necessarily going to work for any everyone. And I think it has to be tailored to where you are in the world and what your seasons are and what grows in your area as well. And when the harvests are in your area, I think it needs to be tailored a bit. I also don't work with the Sabbath as a fixed date on the calendar. I don't just celebrate Samhain on the 31st of October. I celebrate it for two or three weeks beforehand and two or three weeks afterhand. Basically, for me, the Sabbath is a period of time and not a date on the calendar. Um, I think it needs to be flexible to work with modern times. I think it needs to be flexible to work with what area you are in. Uh, Xenia, yes, Wicca only had four Sabbaths. Yeah, when it was originally set back in set up back in the 40s and 50s, it was just the main four. Uh, the other ones were added in the 70s. And Mabon, for instance, is a name added in the 70s. Um, Willow Moon said, someone was saying yesterday the best time to gather herbs is sunset. I'm wondering if this is because flowers close up and go to sleep at sunset. Bit of a magical time. I would flip it round, to be honest, Willow Moon. I would probably collect them in the morning, but you don't want to collect them if they're still dew on the ground. Um, don't collect them at midday because they are in their full then. And if the sun's shining, they will wilt and their energy will fade really quickly. Um, yeah, sunset would work as long as it's not a wet day. Uh, don't collect anything on a wet day to dry because it would just go mouldy. Um, 
I, you have to just look at each plant as well because some plants benefit from being collected just before the flower opens some benefit some you can like daffodils you can pinch the dried flower head off of the plant and use it once it's done its thing look at the individual plants um and when they're at their best and when the best time is to pick them so it varies a bit i think um jane says the wheat's still so green here doesn't look like it's it's be ready in time for lammas yeah I, it has got to work, I think, with where you are, um, definitely. Uh, Kay says, the Bible uses phrase that say, read the signs of the weather and seasons in various ways. When you think technology didn't exist and the weatherman was done. And this is it. People used to read the weather from nature. Uh, we seem to have lost a lot of that, and it's a shame. Um, farmers... In particular people that worked with the land they knew whether it was going to rain the next day or not they knew if they had to get the hay in this day or that day or because they read the signs in nature from weather uh, and i think it's a shame that we've lost that but uh, uh, again connecting with your plant spirits will help you connect with that energy of the seasons as well um Xenia, celebrate the seasonal energy feels right yes you've got to you've got to you've got to work you've got to make it individual got to make it personal definitely so i have waffled again for way over time not that there is a time really it's just a time i set myself really <laughs> thank you so much everyone <laughs> jane's cats turn into tiny horses before a storm see animals are very perceptive to the changes in area Christine says, living in a rural place, I see how the farming year goes and what our farmers are up to. Yes, as the tractors come past the house. I got stuck behind a tractor yesterday. Uh, at the moment, farmers are gathering food for the cows with silage. Yeah, it is. It's about paying attention to where you are. Um, if you are rural, you can follow the farming year. But even if, like me, you're on the edge of the city, follow the plants. The plants will tell you what's going on uh okay native americans often look to the skies and plan the next day they're not the only ones kate lots and lots of cultures have done that uh and farmers over here have done that for generations um because they work with nature and they understand it all um <laughs> he was off to the shops to get ingredients for the fudge <laughs> there's a fudge recipe flow it is very good eva and very simple to make <laughs> um hi Chanella. Um, I yeah, thank you everyone for joining me as always. Do go and connect with your plant spirits. Uh, we would love for you to share any pictures of your gardens on the Kitchen Witch Coven Facebook page if you would like to. We'd love to see pictures of your garden or particular plants that you work magic with and what you do with them. That would be fabulous. Love to see them all. We always like seeing plant pictures. Connect and keep connected. It really, 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 really will help your magic and your connection to Mother Earth. So thank you as always, everyone. Thank you. Have a fabulous weekend, all of you, and I will catch you all next week. <laughs>